Tonight. Last night they started departing at 7.50, so tonight, yeah, they're 10 minutes early. This is considered peak bat season. That's right. The left end of the bridge is very early. So they fly in a column like this basically to keep themselves protected from predators, sort of the safety in numbers mentality. Your younger bats are going to fly a little bit lower, so these, you can tell, are your younger bats. But if you look up and behind the boat, look up towards that big cloud, see there's a little, little speck of little group of bats way up high. Those, those higher bats, you know, are more mature bats. Now, this bridge, or at least the roadway of the bridge, was rebuilt in 1980. The bridge was originally constructed in 1910. And in 1980, when they rebuilt the surface of the road, they included expansion gaps, and the bats can hide up inside of those expansion gaps. They're only about two inches wide, and they go 20 inches deep into the road, and so they can actually hide from their predators in the area, which are mainly large birds. Owls, hawks, heron, uh, grackle have been known to enjoy a bat burrito from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Austin, you're never more than 100 feet from a burrito at any moment, really. <laughs> They're everywhere, kind of like bats. Now, they stay in this column formation for about the first 10 miles of their journey tonight. When they really get going good like this, they can be seen on our Doppler weather radar out at the airport. So if you look downstream over the tree line just behind the boat, you can literally see them thread through the eastern sky behind us for about 10 miles. At the end of that 10 mile marker, they pretty much break apart and hunt alone, or in very, very small groups. There is another stream coming out, and then I'm noticing that the middle of the bridge is also very active right now, so those first three arches of the bridge are very active. I'm seeing some movement on the north end of the bridge as well, so there should be a stream coming out of the north end of the bridge if we're lucky duckies and they get antsy. They'll come out of that north end of the bridge as well. There goes the middle. So now they're coming out of one, two, three, four spots along the bridge, probably soon to be five or even six. Now when the bats started moving in in 1980, we had bats in the area. Everybody knew that, but nobody had any idea we had this many bats. And uh, obviously because they never congregated in one location. Well, those expansion gaps, just by coincidence, are an artificial ideal roosting habitat for the Mexican free-tailed bat. That's the species we see here tonight. This species is so prolific in the state of Texas, it has been declared in the last couple of years the state small flying mammal. So yeah, state flower. <laughs> yeah, we have one of those. State small <laughs> flying mammal. Naturally, it's the Mexican free-tailed bat. Batman. There goes, there goes a column right over us. Look at this. You can look up, just don't look up and off, people. <laughs> Mouth's closed. Cover your drinks. How long does the bat live? These bats will average about eight years in their lifetime. Wow. The long. female, that is kind of long for a little bitty thing. Now, their first year alive, however, there is a 50% infant mortality rate. So, um, that's why they have all of this very, uh, kind of defensive behavior is because they're so vulnerable the very first year that they're alive. We know about their first year of life because this colony is incredibly well researched and they're right over us. They really are literally right over us. This colony is incredibly well researched and it is in fact a birthing colony. So the first 750,000 bats that congregate here at Congress Avenue in early March, because they are migratory, they come to Austin from Mexico in the very early uh, couple days of March and then they take off back down to Mexico in the early days of November, when we have about our first cold snap. Keep looking downstream, you can see them just going way off into the distance. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? So the original inhabitants of the bridge, the maximum adult capacity in March is 750,000, and they are all female, and they are all pregnant, which a lot of people don't know. So this is indeed a birthing colony and it has provided scientists and researchers uh, a great opportunity to get to know, uh, you know, this bat behavior in general. So the colony basically doubles its size throughout the season. Each and every mother bat 
that migrates here will have their baby in the first 21 days of June, every last one of them, and that's called the birthing period. And they can actually even delay gestation of a fertilized egg in order to make certain that they have their baby in that first three week window of June. So they, all of them do. Immediately after that, there is the nursing period that lasts for five weeks. Each mother gives birth to one baby apiece. They're called pups. They're born pink and hairless. They're totally unable to fly and dependent upon the mother. And when they're born, they're born about one third the size of the mother, which is the equivalent of a human giving birth to about a 40 pound baby. So that is a pretty significant day for a mom. Now, if you notice, they have slowed down, too. so we don't see the giant columns. If you look way off into the distance, you can see that first shift is now going off to the east. But if you look under the bridge, you'll notice there is still some activity under the bridge. They do literally leave in shifts. So this is just shift one of approximately seven shifts that will leave tonight. It will take them almost two solid hours to totally vacate the bridge. Now, the, the following shifts, they'll pick back up in just a few minutes. They won't be quite as big. So the first couple of shifts are the largest shifts. Now, the day of the birth, what the mother does is she spends the first couple of hours kind of cuddling with the baby. And she's learning the baby's scent, and she's learning the baby's sound. And she takes off that night, just like tonight, just like any other night. She goes out, that and she hunts. She'll come back and find her baby by scent and sound alone, night after night after night for five weeks, and that's the nursing period, which is pretty spectacular. The babies have been found to be stashed in the north end of the bridge. This is just some uh, information they discovered in the last couple of years. So the north end of the bridge is actually considered the nursery end of the bridge. So when we see a bunch of bats leaving from the north end of the bridge, it's almost guaranteed those are your baby bats. They're kind of antsy. They're ready to go. They're hungry, right? At the end of the nursing period, the mother really has nothing whatsoever to do with the baby again at all. So the baby teaches itself how to fly, how to hunt, and how to navigate, either by observation or instinct, just kind of follows the path. To take off, what the bats do is they literally let go of the bridge and they fall about three feet and they just open their wings and they take off. So they need three feet of drop in order to take off. If the babies fail at launch, which is common, they end up in the water, which is not it, not the end of their story. It's not the final chapter. They can actually swim, not Michael Phelps or anything, but they can kind of back paddle over to the bridge. And what they do is they get up on one of these pylons and they climb up it and they jerk dry and they take off again. So they only need to climb up about three feet and they drop and they take off. Originally, the reception to this colony of bats, all of a sudden we went from not really knowing we had this many bats to we have this coming out every night, you know, for every night during the summer. And a uh, quick show of hands, how many of y'all know a whole lot about bats? A couple, right. There's a few of us that are curious, we're enthusiasts, but really, honestly, not a lot of people know a lot about bats. And that was the case, obviously, in the early 80s when they found this bridge. So. Not knowing a whole lot about bats. All you really know about them is myths. We've got a lot of really well written fiction and superstition that sort of clouds the bat in general. Right? So, things that we don't fully understand, it's very common that we tend to fear what we don't understand, right? So, the original reception was to actually pass around petitions to have the colony exterminated. 